Okay, good evening. This is the Planning and Zoning Commission for the Village of Vernon Hills, and we need to start with a roll call. That will be your cue. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Commissioners Gorick. Here. Cotton. Here. Hesner. Here. Heidner. Here. Mulcrone. Here. Chairman Morris. Here. Okay, this evening we have consideration of a public hearing case 22 07. Uh, which is an application seeking approval to amend the special use permit granted in ordinance 93-25 and amended by ordinance 2008-59 allowing construction of an additional drive-through lane along with approving a landscape buffer setback variation that's a mouthful and secondly approval to amend the approved site landscape and architectural plans related to the new drive-through lane and relocated garbage enclosure uh, the revisions to the special use permit allow construction of a third drive through lane and amend the approved site, landscape, and architectural plans to allow expansion of the existing Portillo's Barnelli's drive through and relocated garbage enclosure on property located at 221 East Town Line Road. The property is currently zoned BP Business Park. Okay, who's going to speak on behalf of the petitioner this evening? Okay. Uh, and the other so gentleman, just stand back. No, no, you're fine. Come. And the other gentleman is for moral support. Um, Peter Cage. Cage. All right, so what we ask you to do is uh, raise your right hand and we ask that you swear or affirm that this testimony you're about to give before this commission of the village of Vernon Hills shall be the truth. Yes. Okay. The primary rule we have uh, is you need to speak from one of the microphones because this is going out to the masses and we don't want them to miss a single word you say. Wonderful. Okay, so with that, you are on. Bosman Medi here with Portillo's. Uh, due to the eminent domain taken at our site in Vernon Hills, which places our building inside the setback, we partnered with the village and our landlord to produce a variance application. We took the opportunity to also seek a variance to add a future third lane to our drive through, which may cause some landscaping and facilities enclosure relocation. Tom Peterman, our civil engineer, We'll cover the technical details, which are in the hard copies you've received previously and are on the PowerPoint slide up on the screen. Are there any questions? Yeah, yeah maybe for my benefit, maybe Mike's got to answer this. The building is within the setback now? No, the building complies with the setback uh, requirements. It's just the landscape buffer that's being encroached by the drive through lane. You're required to have 50 feet. Right. They're going to have 17.5. The building's in compliance. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You're up. I really didn't have anything to provide, except we're going to go through the plans real quick. So if we go through here, obviously the second point is more important than the, thir th uh, the first point here. The reduced setback is caused by adding that third lane. If we, this is an existing plan here we have two lanes that come around the facility and you have drop off and ordering throughout the drive through we have the garbage enclosures down here on the southwest corner as the lane comes around before you head to the east and have your final embarkment on the plan the reason that we have this noted is for the tree removal and protection items that uh, your village will require as we move forward. I don't see it, pop it populating very well on this plan, but we do have a couple of trees that when we add the third lane, it's more towards the center left of the plan, about where that one drive lane tapers in. There's a couple of trees right there that would have to be removed and replaced. I think it's on your next slide. I think this one shows removal, Current. existing and removal. If you can go to the previous slide. Yeah. The trees that are all the way to the left, there's one, two, there's six of them. And they, if you look in the upper right hand corner, they say existing trees to remain. The village, just to be clear, the village will have to remove those trees when we do our road widening project. I just wanted to make that, to clarify that. A lot of the, me. what's the timing on that? Um, it, after the land act, we're in the land acquisition phase, and please don't put this in stone. But it'll be, uh, it'll be the next construction season, uh, hopefully if everything lines up right. 
Uh, so in other words, this would be completed before that's done. Uh, yeah, if they start on the work right away, then yeah, then the drive-through lane would be done first. So yeah. we just don't want them putting any landscaping in an area that you're going to that the village is going to remove. Correct? correct, and we would we would monitor that, okay. and because and, and again, they, if they put landscaping in that's meant to remain, right, and then we um, we could destroy that as part of the road widening project. Right. I'm not sure if we have a slide. I have other slides here, but there's the roadway dedication, right, and that'll describe the new property line along Lakeview Parkway. But then there's also a temporary construction easement that goes further into their property. And that gives the village the right to yep. disturb their property to install the road. And then ultimately we, uh, we, we you know, reestablish it and, and- You just, we just don't want new stuff planted that you're gonna- That, that we're just the gonna village is gonna disturb. And, and, and we'll make sure that okay. doesn't happen. Thank you. Um, to add to that, we don't know if we'll have all the budgets and drawings in order and making a, a possibility of beating your timeline. There's a possibility that it could take two years to put this all together. And of course, we'd be working with the village to make sure we meet you know, their schedule as well. Thank you. Thank you for the timing there, Boz. Let's see if it goes the right way here. Great, and as you look here, here is what the ultimate build out would be. We would have three lanes that would require removal of the island at the front entrance to the drive through the front entrance being at the northeast corner. It would continue as it would go in a counterclockwise motion here, come around the facility heading west, going south, and coming along the south side of the building as it exits to the east. There would be three continuous lanes. Uh, one of the questions that was brought up during our original submittals was, how wide are your lanes? Well, a, a typical parking stall is about nine foot wide. In Portillo's, they usually go 10 and a half foot because that three foot of shared space ends up to be where the, the, the employees walk between to get your orders or deliver your bags or take money as you've probably seen at some of the other Portillo's, not even just the Vernon Hills one. Uh, as you extend down there though, that requires us to move the trash enclosure a little further south. And it, there's an island, a parking island on the south side that would be removed that we would replace and have that aisle that was on the south side replicated south of the, the island. Hit the wrong way again. I'm gonna go down one of these times and get it right. Oh, one, you know, one feature I didn't touch on really quick. Around the entire length on the north side there, as it goes around the turn, as it comes west towards Lakeview Drive, there's a retaining wall, an existing retaining wall. It, it varies in size from a foot and a half in some places, 18 inches, to about three feet. Uh, when we started looking at some of the old grading that we have for the site, it would appear that we'd have to add to the height of the wall it may get as high as four or five feet, but it would be on that inside curve there. As part of our application here, we have the landscape plan. This would be in addition after we, done, after we have completed our project to what Mike was talking about. We didn't want to install any of these uh, new landscaping beds or trees or any of that before the work was done to the street. type of trees, types of plantings that we would do. I am not a landscape architect by trade, but I can try to play one if you have a question. And then lastly, we did provide details of what the new trash enclosure would look like. If you look in the, I, I think you all have the, this plan in front of you. If you look in the upper left, upper right corner, that is the, the elevations of the trash enclosure. Uh, the foundation plan and all those types of things are here on the left side of your page. I think that's it, Boz. I think that's what we so put together. What is the reason for adding a third lane? You're, you're, you're taking, you have two that you put into one currently. Now you're going to have three that you put into one. You're, you're not going to be serving, uh, you know, the food any faster. Is it to just get the cars out of the parking lot? Is that the point of this or? 
One of the reasons, and, and that's a great question, thank you for asking. Uh, one of the reasons that we're looking to get this variance is we feel that adding the third lane will streamline efficiency. I don't know that I could answer in which direction right now. We've just opened our first three lane drive through pickup service only in Joliet. Cherville, Indiana, we're building a three lane drive through as well. We understand that there's a need and we understand that the market is asking for it. Some of the communities are also asking for it. Being preemptive and planning for it, I feel, will find the purpose to streamline the efficiency in so many different directions. Okay. I, and I'd hate really, to pinpoint just one. No, and that's actually, you have a single point of distribution. So no matter how many drive through lanes you have, they all come into one. And that it can only go as fast as how fast you're, you're delivering to those cars. Mark, may I interrupt really sure, quick, though? Sure. Now, all these new ones and this one here, you'll have three lanes continuous all the way until you get out. But food is only coming out of one way. No, there, it's coming out of one point oh. in, the, in the restaurant, right. but you have employees going to all three lanes. In fact, the third lane in a lot of the operations is the online order lane. So the person when you're, the first interaction you have is the person that got your online order. They tell them that, oh, you're here to pick it up. So they're going through in that lane while you have the st typical two that are going around the rest of the drive through So, so right. go ahead. I was just saying, I, I, I'm questioning the need for a third lane because I've been a patron of Portillo's for over 20 years. And in this specific location, it is rare when that second lane's in use. It's usually coned off, even at high times of usage. So I'm, if you're not really utilizing the second lane all the time anyways, why do you need a third lane? Well, we're continuing to upgrade all our facilities in our existing locations. We have a considerable amount of technology from our new units and our new developments in comparison to the ones that have been developed in the past. We can't abandon them and say, hey, well, sorry, you didn't meet the timeline. We're trying to bring them all up to par. We're trying to have them all meet the same types of efficiencies and successes we've been seeing with these new developments. I so think that, I think yes, that it's, it's, it's great to hear that you're going to have three deliveries. However, is, how, how is this store dealing with uh, staffing? I mean, I think one of the reasons, to your point, and I was through the drive through recently, there were a lot of cars, but only one of the drive through lanes was open, and I was just wondering, is it a problem sometimes hiring people today because it's, you know, you have a lot of staffing issues in some of the retail in any business, really. And great question, again. Um, and I don't know that I could have a silver bullet for that answer. I know that we've been fortunate enough to find some remarkable success here through some difficult dynamics. And I have no doubt that we'll continue to find that success as we overcome some of these hurdles that you know, everybody's overcoming right now. I don't know that we have an exception to that rule. I don't think that those difficulties discriminate even into our industry and our success. But we've been fortunate enough to learn how to navigate and surf through that to have a high 90% success rate in having the employees that we need for our, for our units. And I do think adding a third lane is a good idea, especially Me when too. you're going to have you. a better uh, uh, ability to, to serve all three lanes. I remember when the ex when this Portillo's was expanded, I think we were told at that time Dick Portillo came in and had lunch and he couldn't find a place to sit. <laughs> so they and this was one of the, has been one of the more successful restaurants and I don't know if it is anymore, but I think three lanes when you get to the busy times like at lunch, personally it's going to get us through faster, which is ultimately what we're after to get back to wherever we're going. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with that sentiment. But uh, given your answer to the question he asked before that, yes, sir. Here. why is only one lane working yeah, right not, now? Yes. Okay. We're, that process of expansion and that process of streamlining efficiencies and bringing our existing units, it takes time. <coughs> and, and the variance that we're applying for right now, we understand that that takes time too. We're preparing for it. We're, we don't know when all these wheels will be implemented, but we know they will be. And this is a great time to start taking that step even further And another one. We have to bring our units up to meet the standards of our demands of the future. Right now, it may be difficult to see why we would need that, but certainly in a very short period of time, it'll, it'll wind up being an asset, not only to us, but also to your neighbors as well.
So if you, if you were instead to just extend the two lanes completely around the building instead of the one right now, <coughs> wouldn't that really meet your needs? Those are conversations that we have too at times. You know, I, I wish there was a silver bullet that we could say, hey, this is how we're gonna do all of them. What we do know is that we're incorporating our third lane drive-throughs systematically in our newer developments because there's a demand and we've been finding ways to make that efficient. But you're saying the <coughs> demand is because you have the call in, pick up your order. And so if you make your second lane that service versus the first lane, which is the regular drive through. Sure. Doesn't that solve your problem? For the time being, yes, sir. But we're, we're looking at this as we know there's going to be a need for it because it's shown us that there's a need for it. We're building that way. And we'd like to be proactive and protect our model and making sure that our customers know when they go to a Portillo's they're going to see a three-lane drive through So the we need issue, to maintain that continuity. The issue isn't at all that you're backing up into the parking lot further to the east. One of the reasons that we would add that second lane all the way around is so that that absorbs some of that traffic overflow. The third lane is supposed to be an online order lane that may navigate as more people come to the uh, to the restaurant could navigate into a, a different. It could be a storage lane. It could be one of those items. We're, we're again. We're just what we're seeing is when we've been working with Portillo's. There's been a lot of success story so far on the, the, the and you didn't bring up Madison. Madison was the first one that they installed uh, and it's been very successful about culling that tide of having too many vehicles extending into parking lots because if you've been to most of their, their facilities, they do have that issue where you have a lot of stacking and queuing going outside the drive-throughs. Those have been shortened by just getting people into the drive-through lanes. And as far as extending into the parking lot to the east, that's not, has Target expressed any concern with that issue? I don't know that I could speak on, on behalf of the lease obligations that we have, but I'm certain that we maximize every square foot that we can get. If there was an opportunity to move this in a different direction without disturbing our neighbors, I'm, I'm sure we would take that opportunity as well. Um, this. This seems to be the least path of resistance on, on adding that third lane drive through, but we're certainly open for suggestions if you feel there's a better way to resolve this. So all of this is really dependent on the, the speed and efficiency of your actual service in the restaurant. It doesn't matter how much parking or lanes you have if the, the kitchen staff is slow. Well, there are a number of dynamics that's causing the need for the third lane drive through. In regards to our staff being slow, I mean, we, we do have a fairly successful rate on our ticket times and our ticket averages and here in Vernon Hills certainly we have a lot of fans and they like all coming at the same time they all have a great <laughs> idea <laughs> you know my sister I was just telling Tom my sister lives right down the street she would kill me if I don't do this right so I'm vested as well not only with what I'm doing here representing Portillo's it's also with family on the other side of the table um, the the slow staff we we like to make sure that everybody gets the attention and service that they need Sometimes that takes a little bit longer than others, but adding that third lane, we feel getting this variance gives us the opportunity when the time is right for us to implement that strategy. And you're right about a lot of your comments. We don't know if that time is right now, but we know that that time is coming. And I think when you look at this proposal, if, if you look at this, in my opinion, you look at the site now, I think adding a third lane from, from a, yes, they're gonna get closer to the road, I don't really think that matters because my guess is they're, they have a variance now anyway because they're too close to the road. And I think when you look at, at restaurants today, and I know Starbucks is struggling with this, their mobile ordering is killing these people. And with one drive through lane, then people are going through the drive through lane with their mobile ordering and it's not good. And DoorDash and all these other things aren't helping them either which is they're struggling, and this is from me talking to people at Starbucks, they're struggling with servicing the walk-in uh, customers and the drive through customers. I like the idea of a third lane um, because you're gonna be servicing, I think you, you will have the capacity to do it. It was just the, the bottleneck was that one point of distribution. 
And if people, because I think more and more people are ordering on their app now and online, and that's a good idea. So. Can I ask you just some technical questions? Sure. Does Portillo sit on its own zoning lot? Uh, that's a good question. I don't have that answer right now. I don't have the updated it, survey. It's, it's on its own lot of okay. record, yes. Okay, so the, the parking counts are based on its lot of record. That's correct. Not a shared parking with Target? No shared parking with Target. Okay. And does the plan that we're looking at reflect that lot, or is it something smaller than their lot? It's, this has got to be a lot smaller than that. Yeah, lot. it shows a portion of their lot. Only a portion. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, because... Right. There's a lot of parking yeah, they use yeah. that they, okay. are not here. Their lot extends south all the way to the main drive aisle, the east-west main drive aisle adjacent oh. to, the, to the main shopping center. Okay. I don't think it helps right. also answer your order. We've been trying effort getting the, the full survey. We have been unsuccessful to get it in the CAD file. Right. So. My other question is, is more technical, is that the, the proposed variation puts the, I'm assuming what it is, the third drive aisle 17.5 feet from Lakeview Parkway. Yes. And the question I have is, as you come west along those ones to the north on the top, Yes. and then you make the turn, if you do it after dark, are people on Lakeview Parkway going to get the sweep of the headlights in a place that they would never expect to see and get blinded? So what is either the, the grade difference or the screening or the berming or the walling or whatever else you, know, you want to put in as a noun to protect against that? Fantastic question. I don't just think it's a great question. The, uh, the great difference is along that four to five feet, standard headlights are about three feet off the ground. So you're four to five feet lower? Yes. Okay. With the roadway. There's one. Two, we are fortifying, using that word, uh, <coughs> fortifying the landscaping behind the wall. Okay. So that adds additional screening. However, once we get into that plan, you know, I'm taking mental note of that, we will make sure that we've got that screened off pretty well. What about um, and the, on the same thought topic as you're coming south and hitting that southwest curve, there's no more retaining wall to block headlights. What's, what's blocking That's going, that? as you come south, if you head directly south, uh -huh. it ends there. And if I can go back to, there's, that's where the most of the trees and the bushes are, the existing and the proposed. All of this would be blocking it here, all in this area. And those uh, are not the trees being removed. Correct. The those are all full, full trees. And as you as you asked about that, you also have uh, part of obviously of this landscaping in here is coming by the trash enclosure. But you have all this area that's with the trash enclosure. And as this heads south here, with this, as this uh, curb returns around the front of the enclosure. This is about where the parking stalls are. So that's actually aimed right at the back end of these parking stalls. Mm -hmm. You have about, uh, I think it's 25 to 30 feet, that whole way back down to that access there right in front of Target. It's about 25, 30 feet wide from the sidewalk to the back of those parking stalls. So that's where those uh, headlights will be aimed at is the landscape area, not onto the street. Except for the gap between the landscaping beds though. But you're heading directly south and you're 30 feet displaced from the, the method of traffic going north on Lakeview Drive. So you have, so it'd be, it'd be the opposite of driving down a street. You'd have the same condition where you drive down the street, you see the headlights on the left, you're driving on the right side, there'd be headlights on your right. But I mean, we can always add more landscaping. It's one of the things we can look at. I still think there's vertical change there and it's more on a sloped condition. Is additional lighting being added with respect to the third drive through? Good, good question. We were moving a street light because there was one, I believe, right there in the curve. Okay, but you're on the south end. Anything along? We're just adding that one there. We could add reflection along the, the retaining wall. That's a design detail we'd probably flush out later. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? From using the Jim? drive through there, I know sometimes some orders take longer than others, and you can stack up at the delivery window and currently the employees are bringing it out to the orders that are ready they're bringing them out to the cars and those cars can currently turn off and go next to your dumpster there right and get out of line right what happens with three lanes so it's the same thing here this this lane here they come in here and they have these four slots that are dedicated for that reason 
are to pull off. They come through here because, as we've noticed with our other three-lane facilities, the online ordering isn't as robust, but they have people out there directing traffic, the employees direct traffic. So in this case, it would be a, a point where the employee would draft, direct them to go here. You go to slot one, you go to slot two, you go to slot three, you go to slot four. This is for people that have the bigger orders, you're saying? Correct. So then the By this fast point, orders would still go correct. all the way straight through now? Yep. Even though... Is there, go ahead, sorry. Is it, there's not an opportunity for them to cut across the other two lanes, though, is there? That's where, that's where the employee has been trained to direct traffic in that situation to be able to enable that employee because <laughs> currently they pull forward if it's not right right, yeah, right. they just pull forward yeah, they can they okay. can do that yeah. they can do that as well right it just depends on how those parking stalls again something that we'll figure out later but they if it makes more sense after we run a couple of the mo methods or models here if they, if they come around here and it makes more sense to turn it here because you have a full drive aisle here yeah that that might make more sense to have them come around that way but then that means they're exiting down there, and that yeah, that's still that still works. Because I've been behind them where they've made them pull up and right. Okay. Anybody else? I do have a, a mm -hmm. question. Uh, <clears throat> so you indicated uh, maybe in a couple of years this this could be something that moves forward. Potentially, yes, sir. So are you are you waiting for? Um, success or failure in Joliet or Indiana or Madison, you said is very successful, but are you, are you waiting to see how those other locations fare out with this concept? No, it's not a contingency on the success of other locations or other developments. We're incorporating the three lane drive through it seems indefinitely moving forward in our developments. Okay, that's, I've, that's... I've been fortunate enough to see some of our upcoming units and it seems like this is going to be a common motif. The unfortunate aspect of some of these moving components, we struggle finding some contractors to do some work for us at times in getting everybody interested to do the work, considering the amount of work that we have to do. So it's coordinating all the different trades and coordinating all the different budgets and making sure internally we're all on point on why we're expanding. We, we want to make sure that we're prepared for success and that may take a little bit of time to do once, if this variance gets approved, we need a plan for it versus just rush and build it right away. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I buy half of what you're saying to me um, because it doesn't take two years to find contractors to build a third lane here, first of all. Indeed. E even if you're doing this in multiple locations, it still doesn't take that long to find them or, or secure it. But I do have a question for, for you, Mike. Um, let's say this petition... Um, is accepted and moves forward. Um, how long is how long is the acceptance of this petition by trustee level people still good? Uh, the ordinance would require that they start work within 12 months from the date that the village board approves the ordinance. Uh, they can, and other other petitioners in the past have done this. They can come back to the board, straight to the board request an extension, they usually request a one-year extension and the board can authorize that extension. They just need to do it in advance uh, of, if, the, if it's approved, they need to do that in advance of its expiration. Okay, so they, they pretty much have, they have at least two years and the board, considering this type of petition, would probably extend it even a third time. So they, they have a, a, a plenty of time for, for what they want to do. Yes, they to do. make decisions. Yes. Um, that's really, that's really all, you know, I think everybody else has pretty much, you know, covered what I was Anyone interested else? Not in. to put words in your mouth, but I think it sounds like you're saying this is your business model going forward. It seems that way, sir. Right. And that, that makes sense uh, when you look at, at, with the pandemic and drive through and, and online ordering, it's just a business decision. That's your business model. Indeed. Thank you. Yeah. And to clarify, I apologize if I may have uh, miscommunicated. The, there are plenty of contractors that would love to do that work. We're unfortunately a small development team that doesn't have the bandwidth to handle all our projects simultaneously. So the, uh, the inefficiencies sometimes fall on us. I, I wish that we had the opportunity to hire everybody to do the work that we need now. Unfortunately, we're also struggling at times navigating th some of, through these business dynamics. It's reasonable. Thank you. Anybody else? I have a question for Mike. Um, so 
how does this impact other establishments in the, in the village with, uh, would they also be allowed to come in and ask for an additional drive through lane like Chick-fil-A? They go from two to one, would they be able to come in here and ask for three? Yeah, they, sure. Any of our QSR restaurants can come in. This this is the first one, and the, and the the question is right on because there will be others. We're in fact working with Chick Fil A. They have a much tighter site uh, to add a second lane uh, to the extent possible. They can't do it through the entire uh, uh, site because on the on the uh, south side there isn't enough width for two. So it'll, it'll end up being a configuration that matches what Portillo's uh, currently has. Uh, and uh, I can, you know, I can only imagine if other QSRs come forward later on. And I think what's driving it is the online ordering and trying to figure out how to move them through quicker, uh, so that and not hold them up for the people that are ordering at the menu board. So uh, I think this uh, this is the first of a number of requests that'll be coming before you. Uh, I would anticipate that, okay. and uh, and uh, Chick Fil A will definitely be before you in the next couple of months. Okay. All right. Anybody else? So considering. Jim. Um, the online ordering business, did you consider any other options besides installing a third lane? Yes. <laughs> so the third lane know. seems to be the best for us so far. What, 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 name one of your other alternatives. We are constantly looking at ways to streamline <coughs> our business operations. Uh, the, we understand the demand that sometimes working outside for our personnel during some harsh weather, getting our orders out and done as quickly as possible. We're all vested. So we have different technologies, different procedures and methodologies that we try to put in place to be as efficient as we can be, especially through these changing dynamics, right? Business is moving at a speed that's hard to keep up with. So I think that there could be a way we could be efficient with one lane, two lanes. <laughs> Certainly we've grown this way with having no drive-throughs and it's grown from one to two. And we hope that progression continues. I'm, I'm hoping that maybe in another six years we could come by and ask for four if things are working right. And that's how business I feel sometimes if it's moving in that direction, we have to continue with that success if it's a vested interest and the village shares the same. The same logic and, and being successful together. Boz, can I Hopefully. answer that real yes. quick? <laughs> one, of the, one of the methodologies that they've done at a few of the restaurants and some of the locations that they don't have the drive through space is they've, they've added a lot of those. You've seen them, the, the shelving units right there, and it hasn't been as successful. People are being turned away by, you know, their, their reaction is, I don't want to go into the off, into there to go pick up my online order. I want to grab it and go. So, I mean them coming in. I so yeah, they have to park. Now. I think that's they have the they have the shelves. They have those shelves, and you you've probably seen them at most of the QSRs. They have, you know, A through E on this shelf, uh, F through K on another shelf, and there, it's not been as successful because people sometimes sit there and oh, where's my order? Whatever. If they're in their car, they feel a little bit more comfortable. Okay, um, this is a public hearing and therefore um, we need to open it up for any sort of input from the public formally. Okay, and the public is not here. So with that, uh, we can close the public hearing portion. Um, I also note that you've provided section 18.3 um, comments with respect to the request, which are part of the record. Um, unless you have anything else to say, this commission has a standing motion to recommend approval. The motion, therefore, would be to recommend approval to amend the special use permit granted in Ordinance 93-25 as amended by Ordinance 2008-59 to allow construction of an additional drive through lane with a reduced landscape buffer of 17.5 feet at Lakeview Parkway and 43.7 feet at Townline Road, subject to the conditions of approval referenced in the staff report, which are conditions 1 through 7. I think this evening we also came up with a condition 8 that the petitioner would coordinate with the village regarding installation of landscaping <coughs> to avoid removal during right-of-way construction by the village. Anything else? If not, we need a second. What, can I mm -hmm. ask what the, what the ordinance is as far as the setback? 50 feet. 50. On both? Yes, sir. So they currently have one already. They what? A variance. 
a variance. Yeah, they have a variance for 32 feet, I believe, or something close to that for the second drive through lane, and that's, yeah. they, they got that in 2008 as part of that ordinance. Okay, so we need a second? Second. second. Okay. I think we would like better. Okay. Any discussion? If not, we have to have a roll call. Commissioners Hesner. We can come back to you. Yeah, okay. let's do that. Okay. Com uh, uh, Commissioners Heidner. No. Mulcrone. No. Gorig. Yes. Hesner. No. Cotton. Yes. Chairman Morris. Yes. Three to three. All right, next we have a motion to recommend approval of preliminary and final site, landscape, and architectural plans, allowing for a new drive through lane and relocating garbage enclosures subject to the conditions of approval, <coughs> pardon me, uh, one through seven in the staff report and the addition of condition eight from this evening. And we need a second for that. Second. Okay, any discussion? Yes, I have a comment. Mm -hmm. um, I look at Portillo's as a good uh, business partner with the village. They are somewhat on an island in their location. I think that what they're asking for is not unreasonable at all. I don't think it's going to have any impact on the surrounding area. Um, and I think that, uh, if anything, this is going to actually increase their volume. And it's something that this is how they choose to run their business. Um, and that's my opinion. So Anybody else? What I would note is that I agree with most of the comments that have just been made. My only, if you will, um, concern, and maybe that's not the right you know, word to use, is that I'm not sure that the need is based upon an issue because of the <coughs> testimony this evening that even the full use of the current two drive through lanes is not being used. So I'd, I'd encourage you, you know, to, you know, do this in steps, so to speak. Use the two, and if you need it, come back for the third. But if it turns out you don't, don't. Um, but with that, um, do we have a second for that motion? No. Gorg. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we need a roll call. Commissioners Cotton. Yes. Hesner. No. Heidner. No. Mulcrone. No. Gor uh, Gorg. Yes. Chairman Morris. Yes. Three to three again. <coughs> When will this go to the village board? By the way, we're a recommendation. They make the decision. Right. Yeah, this is a recommendation. We could flip this to next week's board meeting because it won't take that long to turn around. So it'll be on the June 7th agenda if that fits your schedule. Thank you. And the recommendation will be forwarded to them. <clears throat> and the board will make the final decision. All right. All right. Uh, any, thank you very much for this evening. Any development review so or did we cover it last week? I didn't cover anything last week. We only have some smaller things hanging out there. One of them is Bell Tire at the shops at Greg's Landing. Uh, the other one. What, what, what was that? Bell Tire. Bell tire. tire? Tire, yeah. Is in car tires? Car tires, okay. yeah. Uh, I'm on the, sorry. I yeah. Mean, and you said, you said. Oh, okay. No, it's all right. Uh, we're in technical review for them. They're on the lot just north of Aldi's. Uh, we're also in technical review for a, a new building that would uh, house a Montessori school, much bigger than the one you considered across the street. Mm -hmm. That would be on the former PNC bank property. We're happy we finally have something that doesn't have a drive through attached to it. Because um, Didn't we do that already? That was across that the was street. The, that no, was no. a different no, but we did one establishment. But we did one oh, at PNC, didn't we? We had a, a proposal for a gardener school. Yes. Oh. It was pre-COVID. Uh, there was a number of objectors that showed up. Yeah. And uh, there was a number of motions, I, and I don't remember how the motions fell, but there was at least two or three motions that, that there was not a recommendation to approve. Okay. Uh, it got forwarded to the board, the, and, and they tried to respond to the commission's uh, concerns as part of their presentation to the board. Uh -huh. The board directed that they go back to the Planning and Zoning Commission so you can consider the revised plans. Sorry, I tend to look that way too often. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, COVID hit and they withdrew their uh, petition. Okay. So, If someone were to put um, another facility like that in that site, is it possible that 
we could understand the like businesses within a certain radius including the services they offer and the prices they charge because i don't and when when they were here i don't think we were comparing apples to apples yeah i don't either and yeah and thank you we'll make sure you have that yeah, in your packet you guys see what i mean i yep. mean it, there, there's different types of, of of these facilities and they're not always in direct competition with each other you're, you're talking about preschools and daycares yeah and, yeah. and price because there's for a kinder each. care yeah. there's and remarkable differences yeah well that's why i think it would help to understand if this one is so unique to everything around it, it may not steal customers from them. I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm well, sorry. I think the last petitioner who came in here uh, who was very involved with music mm -hmm. in the way they taught as far as, far as their Montessori um, program, mm -hmm. um, I mean, that was that was unique. Right. Um, that was very unique. And, and actually, I think they gained support from, from this commission. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but... But where did that go? No, wasn't that the one right over uh, the here? The board that's... approved it. Is that what you mean? Yeah. 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 The board ultimately upheld your recommendation and approved it. Yeah. So. Well, but where this site is, though, there's evidently a lot really close. Of, whereas this one over here isn't is so unique. I think, Scott. Right. Yeah. This was a relocation. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a relocation of an existing business here. But yeah, you're right. There's a Kinder Care across the street, not too far away, and then the, the park, park district. district. Yeah, and really the and the, and the Christ gardener Lutheran preschool and the Christ Lutheran preschool. Yeah, thank yeah, you on that. Yeah. And and the gardener school is like a, a step up, and they didn't really represent themselves as well as they could have. I thought because I think the the park district and kinder care are in competition with each other. Exactly. And the gardener school would have given an option for those that are looking for something that, above and beyond that's what's probably offered. Probably goes somewhere else already. Children. What is that other one that is? Uh, that's to the, the West? Go uh, Goddard School. Goddard. Goddard yeah. School. Okay. okay. So there's really four within a yeah. Well, the God, and the Goddard School is at capacity, as I recall. Yeah, they actually you guys they, they put an addition on they, right. They wanted yeah. the bank on the uh, next to them, but the the yep. owner would not wouldn't entertain that, so the building stays empty. <coughs> we will okay. talk about. Yeah, good memory. Yeah. So, oh yeah. So what about what about the the preschool that is considering going over by, um, you know, Lowe's and and. What? They're they're working through. They have the way they have to lay out the site requires that they uh, uh, amend their access easement across an adjacent parcel, and they're working through that now. Uh, the other obstacle they had to overcome was Lake County's requirement that they extend a main from a certain location through to the end of their property. And of course, they don't they don't offer recapture agreements. So if you're the first one in, you're you're going to pay for it. So they needed to. They've worked through that. Now they're working through the easements. So we'll we'll see if that moves forward. And that was kinder care. Uh, and that is a kinder care. That's correct. Okay. Well, the, I don't believe that there's going to be three kinder cares in Vernon Hills. So one of those other existing ones would probably yeah. cease to operate. And move. And we're still trying to get that confirmation. But I think you're right. You know. And I think the one on Phillips struggles. And I think that'll be the one. The okay. other one, by the way, is by. The third one is by Plymouth Farms. Right. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then real quick, we've got the old Denny's mm -hmm. will be, they'll, they're going to repurpose that building. Did I mention that at the last it meeting? It looks like they've done something to it. I was looking at it over the weekend. It, unless it looks, it, maybe they painted it. That might be it. Yeah, well, they may, or maybe, maybe they cleaned, maybe they tore out some dead landscaping. Yeah, but they're, they're not approved to do anything yet. Uh, you guys will get a look at that. There'll be two small additions because there's a, 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 an extension off the center part of the east facade. So they'll fill that in. They'll completely re remake what the building looks like, uh, put all new curb and gutters in, uh, redo the parking lot, all new landscaping. About two thirds of the building will be something called a Wild Fork, which is a higher end meat market. And you can get kind of specialty meats and stuff like that. And then there's a heyday medical spa that would be in the other space as well. So we're working with them on that and technical review as well. And uh, those are the. Are they demoing the building? No, but it'll by the time they're done, it'll look like a brand new building. They're repurposing it. What happened to the? Uh, and, and yes, the mansard roof will be gone. Thank God. What happened to the humongous warehouse? Humongous warehouse is not coming before you. They're uh, they're they're. Uh, the humongous, which was Project Zeus, right. 
which is a very busy warehouse distribution yeah. facility. You order online. Right. Actually, they're gone. So Amazon is gone. And that would have been a uh, first mile fulfillment center, mm -hmm. 2.9 million square foot building right. with a lot of traffic issues we were working through wow. and sound issues. We had a sound engineer consultant. And of course, we always use a traffic consultant. Amazon, I think they had 14%, uh, they, they fell 14% short of their projected earnings, and they've, they've made a decision nationwide to pause their expansion. And so we're probably going to lose the opportunity to have them. Um, the, good news about, you know, the good news about a first mile fulfillment center is that's where the, you receipt certain items. And based on estimates, we were getting at similar facilities in Madison, Illinois, and um, uh, Oak Creek, Wisconsin, I think it is. And in fact, we took a field trip out there. The revenue is somewhere between five and seven million annually. And we operate on about a $30 million budget. So that would have been, if we could have made traffic work, that would have been a good get for the village. You know, we have, even though it's unincorporated, we did have residential, we do have residential uses to the south that we're sensitive to. Mm -hmm. So we're working through sound for them. And then, of course, traffic, because there's, uh, about a thousand employees. So, so what's happening with the site? Nothing. So now they're putting this site back on the market, and we anticipate it'll go to another end user. It'll either be light industrial or warehouse distribution, because it's driven by e-commerce. Mm -hmm. And it'll just be a different end user, most likely one that doesn't receipt sales at that site. Amazon is the only one we could have. That would have been the big fish to catch. That would have been a good one. So there, now I guess the good news is we don't have to worry about traffic anymore <laughs> and, and, and the sound, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, it, was, it, it was a challenging project, but a, wor but a worthwhile challenge. So that one's no longer coming forward. Got it. Okay, anything else? So mm -hmm. I, I stumbled across the, I guess it's a new building in the corporate roads, the uh, recording studio. Oh, the and Philharmonic, I, yeah. And I had never seen it, it's a little architectural gem. And I had not seen it before. Yeah, Corporate Woods, they, uh, the way the, it's, it was developed as a regional plan unit development. Mm -hmm. So as long as they meet all the requirements, uh, they go straight to the board and can get approved that way. They're not required to come through a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Continental Executive Park, by the way, which is where Project Zeus is, it's also where you approve that 130 Lakeview Parkway mm -hmm. uh, project, says that if the site is a certain size, five acres or more, the village manager can choose to send it through the Planning and Zoning Commission, which for 130 Lakeview Parkway we recommended, and for any site in Continental Executive Park that's five acres or more, we would recommend coming through the Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay. But corporate woods, we don't have that latitude. They, they, they can go straight to the board. It was just a nice little surprise. But, I hadn't driven but, back Yeah, that building while. turned out awesome. Yeah, it's it? really great. Yeah. I'll show you where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> it's at uh, Bittersweet, I think they call it, that road that leads you into the Oaks, and Forest Edge Drive. You, you'll like it. It looks like a modern custom home. Yeah, yeah it's pretty neat. cool. And they, they, they tried to save as many trees as they can. Uh, they did a fairly good job, I think. They lost a couple more than we anticipated, but, but overall they did a pretty good job. How many square foot is it? I forgot. Okay. Maybe, it's not big. It's maybe maybe 3,000? It's, mm. it's pretty small. Yeah, it sounds about right. So are we the zoning board of appeals now, too? Mm -hmm. Okay. I might have missed I know they were talking about that. Yeah, we are. And so the person that was on the Zoning Board of Appeals or any of them didn't want to come here? Uh, no, no one's applied for it. We do have an application okay. in place. And we're, when our mayor is able to make that appointment, we, we anticipate that he will. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No, sir. If now we have a motion to adjourn. We need a second. No second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Adjourned. Good night. <laughs> it's funny, Kevin was asking me the chances of this getting approved. I said it's 50-50. <laughs> it came out three to three.